I'm Kazuki Hayashi from Kyoto University. I'm going to talk about reinforcement learning for optimal topology design of 3D trusses. In this research, we propose a method that combines structure optimization and reinforcement learning. There are three advantage of this, advantages of this machine learning driven approach. The high predictive performance, new design alternatives generated from AI, and reduction of computational cost. We want to fully utilize these advantages, but there is a large problem in this research. How to extract latent information from skeletal structures? This issue arises because the conventional convolutional networks are specially designed for regularly shaped inputs, such as raster images. In order to apply machine learning method to trusses, we have de developed a graph embedding method to capture the latent information of structures with complex connectivity. And this is our proposed graph embedding operation. What we need before the implementation is member input W and node input V. W is a vector including the information about the member such as direction, length, and force of the member. V is a vector including boundary condition, load, and local connectivity at the node. The purpose of this operation is to obtain mu, a feature vector with respect to the edge, the member. Mu is a vector considering limited local inf information around the member at first, but by iteratively aggregating neighbor inputs and features, mu becomes a feature vector that can consider neighbor nodes and edges. Here, theta 1 to theta 6 are the parameters to be adjusted during the training. The important property of mu is that the size of vector mu is same for all the members. Here we chose 100 as the size of mu. The next step is converting mu into q value. In the field of reinforcement learning, the meaning of q is an expected future reverse by taking an action in the current state. In other words, if q is large, let's take the action of a because more rivers are expected. This is a formulation of converting mu into q values. Here we further introduce trainable parameters theta 7 to theta 9. So q is a function of theta 1 to theta 9. Now we can compute q value estimations which might not be correct. So the next thing to do is estimating the correct q value by adjusting thetas. We can update thetas by minimizing this loss function. This formulation is same as the novel deep Q network method and can be solved by an optimization algorithm for neural networks. Here we further introduce mini-batch training using block matrices. The equation shown in the previous slide was the loss function when a single transition from the current state to the next state is observed. In contrast, the mini-batch training method is a method to calculate multiple losses at once. Specifically, the observations are put into the buffer in the computer one after another. During the training, N and B transitions are sampled from the buffer to form a mini-batch. We can assemble the connectivity matrices C, the node inputs V, and the edge inputs W for all trusses in the mini-batch. These large block matrices can be used to simultaneously calculate the feature value mu action value Q, and losses L. This way, we have calculated the losses for NB transitions in the mini-batch, and we take the mean squared error of these as a loss function instead. This mini-batch scheme will stabilize the training by averaging the observations. We are going to solve this binary optimization problem using the proposed method. Here, binary means each member is regarded as existing or removed. We try to minimize the total structure volume and the constraint on stress, displacement, stability. To avoid numerical difficulty, a very small size is assigned to remove the members. The trusses used for training are shown below. The trusses have 2 to 4 grids in the x, y, and z directions. Each truss is pin-supported at the lower four endpoints, and the internal top nodes shown in red are candidates of loaded nodes. 
one or more of the red points are randomly selected, and three separate load conditions are provided in the x, y, and z directions, respectively. This completes the initial condition setup. We calculate the action values Q for all members, remove members based on Q values, observe the reward, train the parameters, and calculate the action values for the remaining members again. The removal sequence of members is repeated until the truss no longer satisfies the stress and displacement constraints. We define this removal sequence as one episode. The episode is repeated 5,000 times, and the training parameters are updated iteratively in the process. We show the training results above. The performance improved significantly in the early stage of training, and then the score history leveled off with some fluctuations. We extracted the best squad agent at this point, and the removal sequences are visualized here. We uh, only provided a re reward to evaluate the design at each step, but the agent found reasonable removal sequences. It is one of the greatest advantages of our method that the trained agent can be applied to various frames without retraining. This is a conclusion. We proposed a hybrid method of reinforcement learning and graph embedding for a minimum volume design of 3D trusses. Through the training, the agent successfully improves the, its design strategy. We would like to highlight again at last that various frames can be utilized during the training and the trained agent can also be applied to various trusses at a low computational cost. Thank you very much for your listening.